In order to have a slicer for two pivot tables, first we're going to insert a pivot table on the data that we have. And I have formatted my data as an Excel table. I'm going to put a link in the description if you want to see the video that will also show you how to do this. And the advantage of doing this is that if you add data at the bottom of your data set and you refresh your pivot, the data will be automatically incorporated in your pivot table. So if we click anywhere here and we do insert pivot table and then you do new worksheet, you do OK. Here I can choose, for example, my categories in the row and then total sales USD. And then I can copy paste my pivot table. Now I have two tables. For this one, I'm going to remove the category and I'm going to use the product. So I put the product in the row. Next, I'm going to click on my first table and I'm going to right click on city and do add as a slicer. Now, if I have a slicer, if you see when I click on it, only this updates. To make it also work on the second table, what you do is you go to the second table you click on Pivot Table Analyze, Filter Connections, and here you choose your slicer. You say OK. And as you can see, if I change to Los Angeles or New York, the totals will change and everything will update at the same time. One of the cool options that Pivot Tables have is that you can drill down into subset of your data. So for example, I want to see what are the data that is contributing to this 17,000 sales for cookies. So what I can do is I come here and I double click on it. There'll be another sheet that will open and then I will see all the data that is contributing to this line. And as you can see, the category is always cookie in all those lines. Here I have my pivot table with my categories, and then I can add a city filter. So as you can see, if I click here, I can select one of the cities. But what if I want to have a report for each city? Now, obviously I can select each city and then save the pivot table, but there is a better way to do this. So what you do, you go here into pivot table analyze after selecting your pivot table. You click here on pivot table, you click on option, and you have show report filter pages. You click here, you have city, so you select your city, and there you go. This is the report for Boston, Los Angeles, New York, and San Diego. Here I have my pivot table, and I want to make it nicer. So first thing I can do is to go to pivot table design. So here, after selecting your pivot table, you'll get this menu. And then you have some format. So I'm going to choose one of those formats. For example, this one. I can even create my own format by selecting this option. Then I'm going to go to my pivot table. I'm going to add another total sales USD. Then I'm going to click and select the data that I want to format. I go to home. I go to conditional formatting, data bars, and I can select one of the formats here. So I could select, for example, the blue one. Next, I need to remove those numbers. So I go again to conditional formatting, manage rules. I double click here and then here I can click on show bar only. Also here I can change the colors and the other settings. I will put a link in the description for conditional formatting. I have some lessons related to this so you can see all the details there. Then you say OK and you get everything in bars. In order to add a calculated field in your table, you select your table, you click on Pivot Table Analyze, then you'll have this item called Fields, Items, and Sets. And in older versions of Excel, this might have a different name. You click on it, you have Calculated Field, then here you have to give it a name. So I'm gonna do the average, price per item. Then I need to write a formula. So I remove the zero. I'll select total sales USD by double clicking on it, divided by, then I select the quantity 
and I say okay and here you go you get the average price per item now we can format this by selecting it you go to home you click here and then you have it formatted sometimes you want to have differences between columns in pivot tables so let's see how to do this here I have a pivot table with sum of total sales USD what if I want to see the difference in sales between 2020 and 2021 so I'll click on my pivot table here then I have my order date I'll put it in columns and as you can see I have the two years under the two years I have the quarters the months etc so what I want is only the year so I go here I remove the quarter I remove the order date and I keep the year next I want to get rid of grand total so I select my pivot table I go to design then I have grand totals and I'll do it on for columns only so this is gone next I'm gonna duplicate my column so now I have two times sum of sales USD for each of the years I will come to the second one I would right click then I would do show value as difference from now my base field is not my category my category is this so my base field is actually the years and what it does is it tells you from previous in this case it is correct so from previous it means I'm going to check this versus the previous year, right? So that's what it does. Now we say OK. And as you can see, it is checking this from the previous one, which is here. Here, there is no previous because I don't have data here. So that's why you have a blank cell. And this is where you get your answers. Then I can just hide this column and do this and I get my difference. I think you're gonna love this trick. Basically, you can replace your data in a pivot table with any emoji or icon you have. So let's take an example. I went and I downloaded here in this notepad a couple of emojis from the internet. And I'm gonna use them with this data set. So here I have everything that will be above 10,000. I will use this emoji and everything below 10,000, I'm gonna use this emoji. So let's start. We just select our data. We go to home, then we click on this arrow. We go to number, custom formatting, and then we remove all this. What we do is we open our bracket to put our first condition. So we write more than 10,000, close our bracket. Then we go here. We copy our emoji, select and control C, and we do control V here, we paste it. Then you need to put a semicolon. The semicolon is extremely important. Don't forget it. Then you open the bracket. Our next condition is smaller than or equal 10,000. Then you close your bracket and you select your second emoji, copy, paste, and then you put the semicolon don't forget the semicolon again and you say okay and as you can see we replace our numbers with emojis excel pivot tables allow you to group data so for example here i have bars and crackers so assume that i want to make a group out of this so the way i do this is i click on bars then i press on control and i keep control pressed and I click on crackers. Why am I doing this? Because they are non-adjacent. If they were adjacent, you can just select the right categories. Now, after selecting those two categories, I right click here and I click on group. And as you can see, I have a new group now with a new subtotal and so on. And I can rename this group cat1, for example. And as you can see, I can see the details or aggregate the data like this. Now, if you want to have cookies and snacks as a group, again, I click on cookie, I click on snacks after pressing the control button, which I keep pressed, then I right click, then I do group, and you have another group, which we can call cat2, for example. Excel has a nice functionality to allow you 
to group dates together. So let's take an example. Here I have my pivot table with the sum of sales. What I could do is put the order date in my rows. And as you can see, I get 2020 and 2021, and I can see the quarters and the months inside. Now, what we want is to group our data. So we can right click here and say group, and then we get a menu. In this menu, we can group everything by seconds, by minute, hours, etc. So we're going to take an example and group it only by months and say OK. And as you can see, I can see my sales by months. So for example, January will have all the sales in January for 2020 and 2021 aggregated. Whenever you have dates in Excel, you can use a useful functionality, which is the time slicer. So how do we do this? We click on our pivot table. We have pivot table analyze, and then we have insert timeline slicer. Then you click here. You have all your dates that are in your database. So here we only have order dates and we say, okay. And as you can see, I have a menu now and I can select, for example, January 2020 till August 2021. I can also look, for example, at quarters and I can see my data in quarters and it allows me to select quarters and then my data will refresh automatically.